but it's become so much more, I think, just so surprising and, and so much more special than I ever could have imagined. And, you know, people take meaning from our songs, which is incredible in and of itself, but it like some people really reach out and it's really touch people. And that's just the most special, incredible, not just feeling, but I don't know. It's amazing. <laughs> it's the most incredible feeling, the most incredible thought to think not only are there people out there listening to the words and music that we've written, they're actually not only enjoying it, but it means something to them, which is so incredible. Look in the mirror, do I hate what I see? Who is the stranger staring back at me? Oh, what will you think about me? Catch your eye, I smile and you grin Seems like it's time we could both use a win But what do you think about me? I stare at my phone and wait for your call Trying to remember if I drop the ball You ask me to see you and all time stands still I've dreamed of this moment you say that you will. I want to officially welcome you guys to, to Pop Up Conversations. We're here in Toronto and we talk to artists across the country about uh, the musical journey and the current project. So, welcome you both uh, on the show. Thanks for having us. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so I typically like to begin uh, these conversations with uh, going back to the start. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have Nicole go first and just try and. <laughs> of course, we have to be uh, gentlemanly here. Um, but I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna go, uh, go, go back to the start and just, just have a sense as to where you found music, if you don't mind. Like in my own personal life. Yes. No, you, you first, in your personal life. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, actually, I never really had any sort of um, vocal training or anything like that for a long okay. time. Just growing up, I just, my mom uh, had music on constantly at home, and then, but none of, no one in my family really, you know, is a musician or plays or sings. Some people play guitar, like my uncles and stuff, but yeah, really, um, that was sort of my, my sort of thing, I guess, and I used to, you know, come home from school and just turn on the the music and sing along and practice my singing even though it was hard for <laughs> then just for my own self because I wanted to have fun and sound better I guess and then in high school I started doing musical theater and I just really really fell in love with that and I was super academic I had no plans whatsoever on pursuing anything artistic until literally the very end of grade 12 like I had my university my whole plan totally picked out and then when I went to graduate I was just so crushed that I would never get to perform again and I thought, if it is impacting me this much, maybe it's something I should try. So I uh, first went to drama school uh, in Newfoundland, because I'm from Nova Scotia originally. And I moved to Toronto and went to Randolph, which is a performing college. And that was the first time I'd ever had any vocal training or anything at all. So that was the first time I started taking it seriously, I guess. Awesome. Okay, so um, Nicole, musical theater, and at the end of uh, you, you decided, or rather, you found that you had this much passion for it. But so again, what I love to do here is that when I'm talking to artists, I I, I want to find what um, what 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 pulls them right so if you love something it's different from you have a passion for something but you love it but what makes you take that step to say i'm actually gonna execute on this stuff i love um so what was it for you that eventually drove you towards musical theater that it was so large that you actually wanted to act on it i think i think it was in grade 11 i was part of a show that was really, really special. Everybody, for whatever reason, that was in that show at that time was going through something really intense in, the, in their personal life. And we all, you know, often people will say if they're in the show, it's like, it's like a family. Um, for us, it was really that. And it, that show like pulled us through some of the hardest times in our life and we all just supported each other. And I guess it made me realize how much art and music can actually help people and um, can really matter and change 
uh, change lives. Um, and so that for me was usually impactful. And then also it's just, it's just the best, the best I ever feel is when I'm performing or singing or making music, that's, you know, that's the best I ever feel. So I guess it's, uh, it's part of that, just like that's when you feel most alive, that's when you feel most in the right place, the most happy, the most like you're actually achieving something that maybe uh -huh. matters in some uh -huh. way. Uh -huh. and, uh, and also just its ability to affect people. I've always been really, really, really deeply uh, affected by even just things like underscores in movies can change your whole, I know that's the point of them is to change your whole yeah. mood, but it really, yeah. really does for me. So, um, so yeah, just its ability to really affect people and change them. And in terms of lyrics, uh, you know, make them think about the world in different ways or consider things from a different point of view. So. Awesome. Awesome. No, I, I, I love that. So we're, we're going to pause on your story for a bit. So I'll come to Armand here. Um, so I, I also want to get a sense of, of, of how you've, how you've gotten here. I understand you got a, a guitar when you were four years old and you didn't quite know how to work it, but uh, uh, from just my little reading, um, but again, that was your uh, introduction to music as it were, but uh, give me a sense of how that guitar affected you and why you wanted to gravitate to music at all and, 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 and just that, that period of your life. Uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've always had a passion for, for wanting to be on stage. Okay. Uh, I mean this, and I mean this goes back to when I was given a guitar that, frankly, I don't even think was a real guitar. It probably just looked and felt like one, and was just <laughs> okay. made me happy. Um, but you know, all through, even through elementary school, any opportunity there was to to perform in a school play, I'd be there. Right. Um, and then as I got into high school, you know, drama uh, was the next closest thing I could get to being on stage. Mm -hmm. And I think it was in. Christmas of grade nine or Christmas of grade 10, where like I was dead set on like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to start a band and be a rock star and uh, <laughs> ask my parents for, you know, an electric guitar and an amp. And they said, here's an acoustic, learn how to play it first. And then if you're serious, you can buy an electric. Uh -huh. um, and I think I, I remember the, I remember the time where I started to learn my first few chords and just, and wrote my first song, which wasn't any good. I mean, I was, I was, I was, kid at the time but you know i think it, it, it's kind of this little full circle thing of you know parents giving you a guitar when you're a kid just to make you happy and they did it again to make me happy and uh it turned into something way more mm -hmm. i didn't i didn't actually anticipate it turning into this full-fledged you know like performing journey that i've been on that's gotten me to this point mm -hmm. uh it was it was something that was, it was, I mean, I never, I never took a lesson. Um, no one ever kind of taught me anything. I, the closest I got was my parents bought me a book and said, here you go. Try to learn from this first. Okay. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about lessons if you're serious. And that book taught me enough to get by and, you know, every, every opportunity I can, I try to learn something new. Um, but that's, that, that's kind of the, you, it, it's funny how something symbolic you know when i was so much younger and was watching you know the elephant show with churn and Bram as a kid and pretending to be them like that was <laughs> that was my lifelong dream uh, and you know it still is they're they're still around so i got to meet them and that was that was oh look at that breaking news <laughs> i got to meet their childhood heroes that was that was that was something else but um but yeah i think it's it's been it's been a really fun journey that i never thought would actually ever happen i mean i thought First off, I was I was dreaming by asking my parents for a guitar, mm -hmm. and the fact that they actually got me one, even though it wasn't one that I wanted, um, was still pretty cool. And you know, I don't know. In my head, there was always this this this, this big difference of, of of what happens when you have an acoustic yeah an acoustic guitar versus an electric guitar. And you know, as I started to finally learn songs and learn you know just the foundations of music, you know, there's just this universality underneath it that doesn't really matter what you're playing on, whether it's a piano, whether it's a guitar or, or any other instrument, um, there's still, there's magic to be made there. And that was a cool discovery. Awesome. 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 Cool story. Uh, Nicole, so you go off to, to, uh, to start musical theater and you're working in that industry and that discipline. Um, how was that like for you? Uh, how, how, how did that, how did that make you, uh, how did that make you feel as an artist uh, getting into that medium of expression? 
honestly, it's, it's my favorite thing in the universe. Like I, you know, um, when I first started in high school and things like that, I started getting like albums and from various different shows and stuff like that. Like that's, hear a song and I immediately go into that character in my head and to actually get to do that for real because like I said growing up I was always very academic I was like I'm gonna become you know a doctor and I'm gonna study and study and like I I was one of those people who would have said like oh acting and music that's not a real job you know <laughs> it's so funny and now it's like unfortunately a lot of people still think that way but go ahead <laughs> but uh but no I oh man I loved it going to theater school was like the greatest dream because you know you watch like fame and glee and things like sure, that and it sure, seems sure. so removed but then to actually get to do it i got i went to theater school and it was a really old building it was very much like glee or sorry very much like fame <laughs> it's very, but uh but yeah and then to get to do it as a career i've been very 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 lucky i mean i guess i started out being open to anything and really taking any project that like auditioning for everything and taking anything i was offered and uh so in that way i've just been sort of open to everything but I've been really really fortunate that up until you know the plague <laughs> I've been fortunate that I almost always had another show on the horizon which is very rare yeah. um, for an actor and it hasn't always been like a big crazy amazing show but there's always been something so um the past couple of years I actually have been able to mostly support myself on uh, just theater stuff alone which was amazing so yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's the greatest feeling in the world for me to get up in there and be another character. And, and the, I love all theater, but musical theater is what it is for me by far. Because once you add that element of music into it and mm -hmm. that expression and the, the singing and the swell of the orchestra and all these things, it's like there's nothing else like it in the world. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to ask that as well, just the difference between, you know, theater and musical theater uh, as well. But to, to your point of what you just said about being, um, it's so rare to find an artist or like a like a like an actor go from show to show in the theater discipline. It's uh, so for you to be able to do that, that's kudos to you. So, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. OK, Armand. Um, so what happens next? Um, I understand you were in theater as well yourself? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it got me through high school and I went to school for television and radio production. So okay. I learned a lot, of the, a lot of the technical stuff that I was doing in high school, uh, translated into college university. Uh, I was playing in bands throughout university. Um, some are gonna put in quotes as bands, um, so I'm not, you know. So there were there were a couple of different bands all through um, all through university that kind of kept me busy on the creative side. Mm -hmm. And when I finished um, when I finished university, uh, my band at the time broke up, and I was sad because it broke up. <laughs> I mean, it was it was the the only real creative thing that I had going for me at that moment, and mm. losing it was. It was a kick, you know, despite the fact that, like, I mean, in hindsight, that it wasn't really going anywhere. <laughs> and I think we all knew that. But uh, still, you know, we, I mean, that, that band broke up, I think, the day before we had a show. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember the promoter, like, sending us a message the next day saying, like, can you guys break up tomorrow, please? <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, I, I started doing a solo thing. I released uh, my first solo album. I went on tour. <clears throat> did that again uh, a little bit later. Um, this is fast forwarding years now. And I remember when I got back from my second tour, my second solo tour, I had played 24 shows in 27 days. Um, so I remember coming home, like from that last show, driving home, packing up all the gear and literally going like, we are not touching that for the next year because we're, we're done with music for now. Uh -huh. And not because, and not because I didn't enjoy it just because I was, I was spent, you know, I Exhausted, spent yeah. four months writing, recording, and then another month just playing nonstop shows on the road, which was, uh, which was an absolute blast. But had I not, you know, burned myself out, I wouldn't have gotten back into theater and that's kind of where this journey starts to like mesh in um, because theater, I wanted to kind of revisit my high school days and, you know, jump back, jump back on stage. I wasn't ready for music yet, but I wanted something creative. And, um, you know, I started, took a couple classes here and there where I could just to 
make myself feel like I knew what I was doing in the slightest bit <laughs> and started auditioning. And then someone who is now a very, very good friend of mine, uh, of ours actually, <laughs> um, he actually gave me my shot and said, you know, I'm going to cast you. I, there's something about you. And I, you know, despite the fact that you have no credits on <laughs> this blank piece of paper that you call a resume, um, we'll, we'll go for, and uh, we'll go for it then. And, you know, ever since that, it's, I've been, I've been pretty lucky with a lot of the roles that I've gotten. Um, and I haven't, you know, I haven't necessarily pursued it quite to the extent that you know, Nicole <laughs> has, uh, but you know, I've had so many other kind of creative projects going on the go all, along with acting. Um, and it was through that production company. So that was in 2014. So then a year later with that same production company, uh, Brian, our friend, cast Nicole in this role, in a role, and we ended up doing our first show together. And that's how, and that's how we met. That's, that's, that's where everything started. Awesome. So 2014. So the reason I go back, um, usually when I, when I try and dive back into artists' uh, origins and the, uh, and the musical starts, um, I think particularly for you guys uh, being in theater, um, I'm a theater artist myself. My undergraduate degree is in theater arts. I think people don't quite understand how, uh, how difficult a discipline it is. Um, it's... Uh, you're like, getting the nods from us going like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and so I was very excited when I, when I saw your backgrounds and all the stuff that you have been through. I think it sets you up for a very solid career as a musician because all of the training that you have gotten uh, uh, up until this point, I think it does something for your... Uh, for your tenacity and all of the stuff that, you know, of course, the music industry is going to demand from you as well. Uh, but I just want to set that base. And that's the reason I've gone back as far as I did to kind of let people know that, you know, you know, people who come from a theater background, they, they work really incredibly uh, uh, hard at, at, at their, their craft. Um, it's, it's um, yeah. So 2014, <laughs> um, you guys meet um, now. There's typically a pivotal moment. I, I want to just get a sense and how because I find very fascinating the the dynamics in a group. Um, what was that pivotal moment where you guys decided that you know at some point down the road um, we possibly want to do this together to start creating music together? And so that's a one part question. I'm going to come back to a second part of this question. But what was that pivotal moment for both of you to say, hey, uh, maybe maybe we can uh, maybe we can rock this together. It's funny because normally whenever whenever we talk about this show, we, we just this show, do we, you mean this project. No, th no, <laughs> I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about Alpha, uh, Alpha you... Bi. normally. Oh, yeah. So what? Per, like from the very get go, personally, we there was a connection right off the bat. Like we okay. we, we like a lot of the same stuff. We had a lot of fun, and um, uh, the show that we were cast in was actually a recurring thing. Mm -hmm. So it kind of gained a little bit of traction and started to be a thing that was put up annually. Um, okay. And so the cast wasn't always exactly the same, but it usually you know we were always a lovely friend. <laughs> um, usually, you know, it, we would get called back to do it and every time it would be like you're doing the show i'm doing the show Yay! it's so great to see you you know so so there was that but um, then in 2017 yeah we'll, we'll call it that uh we got to work on and it's funny because now we can actually say this to a theater person they will likely know exactly what show we're talking about <laughs> um normally we just say uh we did a show called the last five years Okay. Um, and that was, it's a two person, 90 minute, sung through, no intermission show. Oh my God. Where our director, she gave us one chance to leave the stage each. Each, yeah. Yeah, we each got one opportunity to leave, the, and it was literally just for a quick costume change. And other than that, we were on stage, both of us, the entire show. Brutal. So that was, that was four months of, you know, rehearsing, you know, 15 to 20 hours a week. Uh, leading into the production of that show, and I don't know, like there was there was there was something. I mean, it, it's it's one it's it's one of my favorite shows. It's one of yours. And I know that. Um, so being able to do kind of one of your favorite shows with with 
you know, one of your favorite people is, uh, is, is a blessing in and of itself. And I think we, we got to know each other's work ethics so much more. We got to kind of see each other in action that much more. Um, we got to support each other through so much more in that show. Cause it was, it was demanding mm-hmm. in so many ways. I can imagine. Um, well, it's, 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 it's always interesting when you basically have a cast of two and, you know, a production team and an orchestra and everything of like 20. <laughs> so we were, we were, we were outnumbered 10 times, but um, that's, I think the, the, the one key thing that really, really brought us together. If it wasn't, you know, all the, the, the different places that we performed the other show, this one show kind of really cemented that. Awesome. Awesome. So Nicole, um, music though. So it's a different type of storytelling medium, right? Um, uh, luckily for me, just, I think it was just yesterday. I, I spoke to another lady who had, uh, who had been in theater for some 10 years, uh, and you know, had done Soul Pepper and had been in the Mervish productions and all of that stuff. Um, but transitioning into music, I asked her, okay, what, it's a different medium of storytelling. Um, what do you find uh, fascinating about coming around this full circle back to music? Or what's the difference in storytelling that you that music affords you that you wouldn't rather get from uh, from theater, uh, musical theater? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I think it's funny because I'm so ingrained in musical theater and that's again, where all of my musical training comes from, like in terms of vocals at all. Um, I, I tend to get very into characters. So um, we recorded a, a duet together and uh, it's, it's really funny because like, <laughs> I'm probably still a lot like this, but like, especially in the original um things that we recorded to do our little like we we recorded the song together and then we did a little launch of like oh maybe we should do some covers to like launch it and so in like the covers i just i get so in character for like every song (laughs) where mom's just like you know performing and i'm just like (laughs) <laughs> like really intensely in character, um, which is kind of funny. So I will say, I will say there's a bit of a difference there. Um, but uh, and I'm sure we'll probably end up talking about this at some point. Um, once we started songwriting together, I think musical theater and that element of um, characterization and storytelling uh, really we maintain a lot of that mm-hmm. in our own songwriting. But I think in terms of um, in terms of performance and also, I guess, sort of in terms of songwriting, I think what's a little bit different for um, when you're just, you know, performing just music outside of musical theater yeah. um, is you get to remove yourself a little bit from it. And it's you, you kind of give it to someone else, whether it's now the story of the characters in the song or you're giving it to your audience as like a, this is for your interpretation. Uh-huh. It's not so much you like inside the character being like, this is my story. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, it's a yeah. little bit more like invitational in a way, I guess, yeah. maybe. I think, okay. I think that's, I think that's the difference a little bit, which is, is I think why it's so therapeutic for so many people. Is that uh-huh. the word? Therapeutic? Ther- therapeutic? Yeah. Ther- it's like therapy. <laughs> um, I think it's, it's because you, uh, you know, you get to take yourself out of it a little bit and, you know, yeah, Armand, would you would you would you say that um, that uh, you guys are more creators now as opposed to being in the creation of, of somebody else's project? Um, um, you guys get to drive that narrative and take your 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 music where you want it to go and bring it to you know stop it where you want it to stop. Would that be a fair assessment to say that's what music gives you that theater didn't necessarily uh, give? Yeah, I think. I, I think that's a really good way of putting it is, you know, you know, fulfilling somebody else's creation versus our own. Yeah. Um, this, when we, when we first started writing our own music, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say we had a goal or where we wanted to take it or what we wanted it to sound like or anything like that. We just kind of said, we should, we should try writing a song and we did. And then a second and then a third. And then that kept going. And our, our process is, Definitely not like anything that I've ever worked on before. And this is with, and I've worked with bands. So this is the first time that I've, you know, working with somebody one-on-one. Yeah. Um, the process and how we go about writing songs is completely different. And it is very, 
one of the things that I think we've been asked in the past is, you know, like, well, the album we recorded up in, uh, up at, uh, in a cottage about three hours north. Okay. And a lot of people say like, oh, well, are you going to, are you, when's the next time you're going to go into a studio or are you going to do something like another location again? I'm like, I, I think we do another location. I, I, we kind of like having, I don't want to say having control. Maybe it is having control <laughs> that we don't want to give up. No, control is good. <laughs> we like having the creator's control behind everything from the moment uh -huh. that we like put a pencil to a paper, to a sheet of paper, to the moment that that song is released. You know, we're, we're, we're in that from start to finish, whether it's tracking, whether it's recording, whether it's, you know, uh, figuring our uh, orchestrations for it. It's something that we like having to ourselves as much as possible. Oh. Um, because then when it's finished, it's like, it's ours, it's ours yeah. completely. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I uh, no, that, that, that's, so that's why I think, I, I think I find that process fascinating. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the creative process and when artists like yourself who have come from a background that's so steep in storytelling, it, it definitely is going to translate. And I think this is a good segue into your, into your record, which we're kind of like here to talk about, which I'm excited to talk to you guys about. Um, but you can start to tell like when i when i read about you and i, I start to listen to to the project like it, it then makes sense it makes a whole lot of sense to say okay this is how these people got here so i'd love you to take me through the journey of creating that uh, the project when it started i understand you guys have been busy like you 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 put out so much music over like a four month period um where this like a a back catalog that you guys had or you actually wrote that much in the short period of time we we wrote we wrote 15 16 songs in six weeks oh my um, god that's insane which was also not really the intention we just <laughs> we you know we we show up and we just work really well and crazy fast together we have sort of a mind twin thing yeah. going on where we just sort of always kind of know what the other one's trying to say or what the other one's hearing in their head and like sometimes gosh, what's our usually three about three hours to write a song hmm. normally hmm. we, we kind of like to kind of do it all in one go and i mean obviously we, we revisit it later mm -hmm. and we of course of course, and of course. And whatnot. but the basic like this is the guitar part these are the lyrics usually just a few hours <laughs> and, and and that's the thing like and, and yeah and it's not just it's not just an idea. Like a lot of people be like, Oh, I think I wrote a song today. No, we, 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 when we finish, like we could go into the studio and start recording it <laughs> that very same day. Yeah. Um, which is, which is super exciting. And, and, and again, like when we wrote our first song, we didn't think it was going to, it was going to turn into anything. And then after I think second, two or three songs in, we said, well, maybe this will be an EP. And then two weeks later, when we had about seven songs, we're like, I think we're writing an album. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, let's just let's just keep going. And we we honestly expected. We kind of figured June July would be when we would be releasing it, based on kind of like. But you know we we. <laughs> I think you, you when we when we, when we, yeah, when we had when we had the songs that we we wanted to record, we, we just said we're ready. Like let's take it in. We're 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 we're, we're also very eager. So. <laughs> No, awesome. That that's fantastic. So April 9th, um, the al the the album dropped, right? Um, what, like, what did it feel like putting out music? I know this is kind of like a question that has been asked over and over again, but um, um, I know that a lot of themes in the album has to do, or rather, you know, it's kind of like navigating the the moment that we're in. Um, but what did it feel like to have that kind of subject matter drive the project that you guys were working on? Um, um, just the craziness of the world and trying to condense that into art and you know how, how did that feel well I mean this musical project has definitely been a godsend I think for both of us because um, you know as performers we both sort of obviously there are people who've lost so much more but like we we lost uh, everything that made up our lives at that point everything from things we enjoyed uh, doing to our entire careers, which um, at the time we were both lucky enough to be finally sort of where we'd been striving to be and, uh, you know, having that and then losing that. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot of obviously inspiration for, uh, for the work. Um, but also we don't, because so many people right now I think are 
you know, oh, I'm going to write a play about COVID. I'm going to write a novel about COVID. I'm going to write a song about COVID. And like, we didn't want to do that. Uh -huh. um, so I think it, it is a lot more, it draws a lot more on sort of the, the feelings that might go with that and the situation, but not, about not directly of that, except for yeah. maybe one. <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of it is things that we've, you know, experienced in our life in other ways that might be, you know, uh, exacerbated or uh, <laughs> by the situation. I think, I think a lot of the things that we felt uh, and that we wrote about going into the album weren't, like Nicole said, weren't COVID related. We could have written these outside of, outside of this pandemic. That being said, okay. there are a lot of things that we wrote about on there that I think a lot of people who don't necessarily, who have never necessarily gone through mental health issues um, or just some of those, you know, some of those concerts, just some of those themes who have only experienced them now during this pandemic are, are able to listen to these songs and relate to them. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think our audience, you know, not necessarily that there was a target audience, but if you, if you had an audience of a hundred people that could listen to one song right now, if this pandemic wasn't there, I don't know if 50 of them would have been able to relate to it as much as they do uh, now that, you know, we've gone through this last year and, almost a half of uh of this lovely <laughs> plague as we like to call it all right okay so tell me about the title itself how you guys landed on there uh, on the uh, feeling uh feeling bad feeling better um I, I i i heard it and it seemed to have a duality for me um i i I actually felt there was a side A and a side B to the project, and you had all happy songs on one side, like, and, and uh, you know, um, but uh, I, I was very fascinated with the title itself. Cool. So if you could just kindly explain that uh, as well. well. It was definitely the last thing. Um, we wanted to make sure that, you know, the album was a cohesive thing once it was finished. Um, <laughs> and so, um, you know, we sat down, we looked at the songs, and we thought, what is the core of this what is the primary overarching story we're telling um a lot of it i think comes from when we come up with when, whenever we're writing we'll normally come up with a concept that's usually where our songs will start okay um, so it for example uh and we use remember the time as an example of that because i think it's a good one so uh track two which is remember the time that <laughs> started off by me calling up nicole and saying i let's write a song about two friends that have to say goodbye. They've been friends forever and they have no idea when they're going to be able to see each other again, but that's it. That's, that's the concept of the song. And then from there okay. we started to develop who these two characters were. And this is where the, the theater kicks in because we come up with like what these characters hair colors are like <laughs> and where they grew up and where they went to school. Um, but that concept, that, I mean, that's, that's a really depressing concept, having to say the goodbye to your best friend of 20 years that you've known your entire life. Most of our songs start out really depressing. And, and <laughs> they don't stay that way. <laughs> and that's exactly it. Like, there's, there's so many, you know, I don't want to say dark, but darker themes on there that could start, like, that we could have landed in a very, very negative spot or a very, very sad and it's very dark. depressing album. Uh, and it would have just been called feeling bad and <laughs> just the period there. But the feeling better is just trying to find the hope in every single one of those subjects that we dive into. So whether it's in saying goodbye to somebody, whether it's in, you know, whether it's in something like mental health, um, whether it's losing something that you love and not being able to get it back, you know, trying to be able to navigate and find some sort of hope towards the end of it. It may not be a resolution, but at least there's hope. Um, I think that was the key message that really came out of the entire process. And I think that stands out in pretty much almost every song that's on there. Yeah. And, yeah like pretty much all of our songs start from a, okay. start from a place of sadness. And then, <laughs> and then towards the end, there's always something, always some bliss. And do you feel there's a certain need to, to speak on such a, on such topical and uh, uh, what's the word now? On such topical and heavy issues like mental health, do you, do you find that there's a need for you guys? Is there a responsibility for you guys to try and push certain, um, probably less talked about themes in your music? Do you find that this is an opportunity for you guys to kind of push that along? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we never set out thinking like, we're going to 
you know, do the social warrior thing. We just, yeah. these things, these are things that are important to us. And I, and this is, you know, our ideas come from that. And, uh, but now that the songs exist, um, it's definitely, it's something that is really, it's a, it's something that's really, really important to the both of us. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think as Armand was saying, since, uh, COVID struck, a lot of people are starting to experience, um, things that uh, they never would have necessarily not appreciated, but you know what I mean, um, before in terms of people who, who may have um, mental health uh, issues. Um, and then now sort of the greater populace is experiencing aspects of that, that, you know, other people might be like, well, this, this is our life. And now people are seeing glimpses of that. And in a way, obviously that's sad and horrible, but at the same time, <laughs> Um, for people who do experience uh, mental illness, um, it's kind of a good thing because now the greater populace is starting to understand that more and starting to see, like, you know, what is depression, what is really intense anxiety, what is, you know, X, Y, Z, all these things. Um, and I think it's people are opening their minds and their hearts to mental illness as a real health issue more than they may have in the past. Yeah, I think... I mean, COVID almost kind of forced forced people to look at their own mental health, um, right. which, you know, it's it's an unfortunate thing. But at the same time, and I think you know, Nicole kind of touched on this. You know, we've had we've had a lot of friends that have come up to us, frankly, in like the last three or four months. Uh, you know, because we're 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 open about our mental health, clearly, <laughs> as you said on the album. But you know, when when people approach us and and you've had people that have said, like, this is what I've been going through. I can't even imagine what a, like, what a day in life is like for you. And we're like, well, what we're going through and what you're going through, really, that's, that's irrelevant. What matters is that we're having a conversation about it. And that's, and that's what all this is about. And if any one of these songs that we have on there, whether it's, you know, about mental health, about being in a hospital, about just all those different elements of it, um, our biggest thing is really just starting a conversation. And if anybody ever opens up and just, you know, wants to have that dialogue with us, all the better. Like that's, that's the bigger thing that, you know, we, again, didn't necessarily set out to do, but now that it's there, let's use it. Let's, let's spark that conversation. I think that's the biggest thing that we can do and the, the biggest thing we can help for. And music is just one of those things that like, you know, people people just relate to it a lot easier than they might to somebody just you yeah. know saying words so you know they find th this song that's about something well not necessarily to them if they're not interpreting it that way but for us it's about something very specific and they they you know find that seed in there and go like i know what that feeling is i relate to that feeling yeah and then, you know it's about something you know a mental illness experience um then that's something they might not have realized on the surface that that is something that they they recognize and that they know what that is. So once it's something they can recognize personally, that kind of makes them go, oh, and the stigma, hopefully it's, it's reduced a bit. Awesome. Awesome. No, I spent a, a good deal of time listening to the record and um, I, uh, no, uh, no, I'm very, uh, I'm very, I'm very honored uh, to, to, to be listening to uh, stuff that you guys have created. Um, um, it's it's unique. It's uh, it's it's fresh. The sound. It's it's different. I speak to a ton of people uh, by virtue of what I do. Uh, it's unlike anything I've I've heard. Um, so uh, my favorite song on there is Shining Star, I believe. Um, and uh, I just um, I I said when I came on here, I, I'm gonna try and just. Um, say that to you guys that I do like the project um, uh, and I think it's uh, it, you guys have you guys have put together a collection of really beautiful songs thank you thank you so much you're welcome you're welcome um, so I want to I want to find out what you how did wh what does broad tree stand for <laughs> <laughs> amazing I love it okay, so, so when we set out <laughs> The, when we first started, we just wanted to slap a name on, on ourselves because we originally had only recorded one song together. Right. And so we just called ourselves. We were like, what to do? And we kind of threw it together really fast. And we started out as A&N &N, for obvious reasons. Okay. <laughs> and then um, we didn't even really, the album was already really in the works. Um, and 
And then one day we were just like, we, 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 we probably were, need like a better name. <laughs> we were a week. We were a week away from delivering it. Yeah, we were a week away from delivering the album, and, and we were, yeah, yeah. You're, so you're, we the name decided, is the name is all you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so one day I came into rehearsal. I, I thought of it um, because a lot of people describe our sound as um, musical theater over country. Okay. Which I thought was really interesting and really unique and really different and really cool. So we'll take it. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and so the very simple answer is, so Broadtree is Broadway plus country. <laughs> but then I also love that imagery of like a big tree and it's very, uh -huh. you know, nature and it's very grounded and rooted. And I love, I love the imagery as well. So. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's very unique. <laughs> it's almost the explanation almost makes it seem more lame <laughs> but it's funny because i remember nicole walking in to a rehearsal one day with, with she's like oh my god oh my god oh my god I, I have an idea but i was so scared he was gonna hate it <laughs> and then when she said it like at first it kind of hits you with the <laughs> after like about yeah that's gonna work <laughs> That's going to work really well. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 fun. Every everyone we've talked to has that, that's asked that question. It's so much fun to tell that story because most <laughs> everyone reacts with the same. Oh, <laughs> I mean, okay, it works. It... No, no, I I think it works. I think it works. Um, um, so. What's I, I don't like asking what the reception has been, so I'm going to ask that in a different way. How do you feel about a project that you have put out? I couldn't be happier, to yeah. be honest. I mean, this is the first of this that I've ever done. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, I was bound to be excited about it anyway, but it's become so much more, I think, just so surprising and, and so much more special than I ever could have imagined. And, you know, people take meaning from our songs which is incredible in and of itself but it like some people really reach out and it's really touch people and that's just the most special incredible not just feeling but i don't know it's amazing mm -hmm. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. the most incredible feeling and the most incredible thought to think not only are there people out there listening to the words and music that we've written they're actually not only enjoying it but it means something to them which is so Okay, I think the number one goal before we delivered it, uh, delivered the album was we want this to be something that we're proud of. Mm -hmm. And frankly, you know, if, if, if we, if we send it out to absolutely everybody, like absolutely everybody for reviews and, and everyone hates it, whatever, it, we're happy with it. And that's mm -hmm. all that really matters. Um, and I think, frankly, we were happy with it before we even started recording. Like we were just, we were so. Every cool. song Ooh. is so special to me. Like I love every one of them. Yeah, and and, and, and <laughs> like and any time that we would write a new song, or there were just there's just this magical moment that that we would have when it was finally finished and we played it through for the very first time, and we we actually save. So every time that we rehearse, we record it. We always record every single rehearsal that we do just because you never know, you never know. when oh that one, God. like somebody sings one thing slightly different, like, Ooh, that. Yeah. Uh, so we have the original, like first time recording of Tapes, yeah, one yeah. of those songs that we ever played, um, which we, we haven't listened back to. And I don't know if it'll be a, a fun party or a Oi party, but uh, <laughs> I think the, the ultimate goal was really just, you know, if we were proud of it and it, I think our goal was if it hits one person and it makes a difference to one person, because we know we have some songs on there that are more than just, you know, a, a good, a good bopping tune. Um, you know, there's some songs on there that are, that are designed to, to reach out and hit a spot that a lot of, like you said, a lot of other songs don't. Mm -hmm. And Honestly, it, I feel like we've accomplished that and so much more since uh, since the release of it. I mean, we're it's only been two months, and we've had so many so many people reach out uh, to talk about you know just things like mental health um, that 
they wouldn't have wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. So we uh, awesome. we're proud, we're happy, we're content, and um, it's uh, it's definitely got us eager to do another one. So we're <laughs> we're, we're excited about that. Yeah, I, I, I'm, so it's you, you guys have articulated it very beautifully. Um, um, I, I, I think, uh, you know, again, it may not be the reason you have set out to do all of this stuff, but just a byproduct of your desires uh, as reaching out and affecting people. And I think that's it's just the greatest gift that you could you could give through art and through your music. Um, what what what, uh, what does the what does the future hold for 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 broad tree i think i'm going to say that not, not that a lot has changed but there's there's we've had we've had a lot to we've gone through a lot of experience in the last week and a half mm -hmm. um so we released a song uh friday was it friday yeah we released oh a song gosh. on friday uh, okay. called Biaz, which was a cover of one of our favorite bands. Um, I won't say it was a cover. It was a, a reimagining of this, of this one particular song. And it's all really about being proud of who you are, being proud of what you are, where you come from, what you may look like, uh, what your sexuality is, anything uh, that not defines letting anyone you. Take that away from and not letting it, exactly. And released Biaz, and within 24 hours, we had phone calls and messages coming into our inbox of people who were terrified about coming out to their parents and this song made them feel like they could. And that was a lot to take in. Like that's, it's a very positive thing, but it, it took it, it, it's there was emotional. a lot of like, there was a lot of emotion to take, to take that in. And I think in the long run, if we can continue to write songs, have fun doing it, and still somehow make that kind of an impact on, again, just one person, yeah. I mean, who, who could ask for anything better? Oh. Nicole? Yeah, pretty much exactly <laughs> that. It's uh, the knowledge that you've actually, being able to actually help someone, someone you've never met, you know? <laughs> That's, yeah. I think it's I think it's it's nice to feel like um, we're able to do something meaningful and something that might be very important to someone. Um, so yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I just so um, I think from this time we started talking, I don't know which one of you I was going back and forth with, but um, I got the sense that you guys were um, you guys were genuine you guys were you were sincere and honest and genuine and 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 i think it has come through for the what 40 minutes or so that i've spoken to you um so part of what we do on the show is to, is to support artists and to highlight the music and um because we find there's so much talent in the neck of our woods in canada and stuff like that um I, I, I do love you guys. I love the material that you've put out and I want to see more stuff come out from you guys. Uh, now that we're going back to uh, what would seem like a, a normal situation in the world, um, I, I, I can't wait to come out. As, as, as I've said to tons of other artists, I, I really want to see you guys play. I want to see you guys uh, come out and do what you, you, you love how to do. These songs have been written like in a very intimate space. I would love to see you guys share it with the world and have people interact with it. And just that, you know, symbiosis that comes from, uh, come from performance. But I want to congratulate you guys again for, for, for having the courage and the bravery to put out a, a body of work um, of their stature, and uh, yeah, um, keep making music. I, 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 we, we, we're supporters of yours. We're gonna keep supporting you the best way we can. But uh, it's been it's been amazing talking to you guys today. Thank yeah, you so much. This really, has been a blast. Yeah, this has been wonderful. We really appreciate it. And we'd like to also acknowledge the fact that despite the fact that we're Canadian artists, this is the first Canadian interview that we've done. And we are so, so, so happy that, that this is how it went because this is what, this is what Canadian interviews should feel like. <laughs> so, so thank you for giving us that because we were, we were beginning to think we're like, I mean, we can get on American TV, we can get on American radio, we can get on Japanese spot. Like we, no one in Canada seems <laughs> so. So thank, thank you for what you're doing for, for all Canadian artists right now, because it's, 
it's it's a tough market and it's a tough thing to to pursue and you know you you know but you notice as much as anyone so we want to thank you for yeah. for, for doing that and if we ever get some live shows you got a free ticket to everyone <laughs> Yay! Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Just before I let you guys go, tell us where we can find all your stuff and any future projects coming on. Just let us know. Um, you can us on Instagram at Broadtree. Uh, Broadtree you, Music. Broadtree Music. Well, thank you for at that. Broadtree at Broadtree Music. Broadtree Music. Okay. Uh, and that's pretty much the username for everything uh, on Spotify. If you search at Broadtree, uh, Apple Music, all the, all the, all the streamers. Uh, you can find us there. And if not, um, Instagram has a link for every single place uh, where we are. YouTube that's channel's a fun YouTube, time. Yeah. <laughs> our YouTube channel's a fun place to be. It has all of our music videos and lots of other little fun upcoming things that we're doing as well. So um, pretty much all the socials. At Broadtree Music. Awesome. Awesome. It's been a blast, like I said, talking to you guys. I know this is not going to be the last. We're going to keep chatting back and forth. But uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, we're we're going to keep talking for now. I just want to say have a, a great rest of your evening, okay? Thanks so much. Awesome. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.